It is Wednesday, July 29th, 2020, and this is your Three Gorgeous Damn update. A trio of articles have broken since yesterday's video, including Three Gorgeous Damn Discharges Yangtze's Third Floodwaters of 2020. Also courtesy of the LA Times, man cannot win against nature amid catastrophic floods, China's dams come into question. And last but not least, courtesy of the Global Times, heavy machinery works to build temporary embankment to prevent possible flood in East China. We also have some new Twitter footage playing in the background of today's video. Let's get into it. This comes courtesy of CGTN.com. Three Gorges Dam discharges Yangtze's third floodwaters of 2020. The upper reaches of China's iconic Yangtze River are experiencing its third flood of the year caused by rising water levels, leading to record levels of water gushing from the Three Gorges Dam. The world-famous dam is reducing the flood water by up to 37%. This can keep the water levels at major hydrologic observatory stations downstream within a safe range, said Gao Yule, senior engineer of the Three Gorges Corporation adding that it can also whittle down the deluge and relieve pressures on the middle and lower reaches of the river. The flood began receding on Tuesday, and the outflow rate at the dam was increased by 2,000 cubic meters per second after water levels downstream dropped, Gao noted. The water regulating, however, is more difficult this time around. Continuous downpours since June have lashed large parts of southern China. The water in many rivers and lakes has hit dangerously high levels, and more heavy rainfall and rainstorms are expected in the coming days. But experts say water levels at the Three Gorges Reservoir should not pose a threat to the dam's multifunctional control system. The 2300 meter long and 185 meter high dam went into operation in 2003. The system also provides a five-tier ship lock and 34 hydropower turbo generators. The dam will keep releasing water to make sure there's enough capacity, Gao said, so it can prepare for further floodwaters. We estimate the third flood will be over by the end of July. As floods continue to ravage many parts of China, experts say many of the cities downstream are being waterlogged due to intense rainfall overwhelming drainage systems as a result of flooding in the river. Now on to our next article, courtesy of LA Times. Man cannot win against nature. Amid catastrophic floods, China's dams come into question. The white-haired farmer ran barefoot to his fields at 2 a.m. so he could harvest his crops before the floods came. He was one of tens of thousands of villagers whose homes and fields were about to be engulfed as a dam gushed open to release rising waters. We have to think big picture, think of the greater good, said the farmer identified as Chow in a recent local news video from Anhu province. Isn't it like this every year? Chow spoke as many rural residents of the Yangtze River floodplains do, accustomed to swelling waters whenever big rains hit. But this year is the worst in decades, with 433 rivers surging above flood control levels since June. 33 of them setting records. The article then goes on to repeat some numbers that haven't been updated in quite some time. Moving on. The floods so far have affected more than 54 million people, including 3.7 million displaced and 158 people dead or missing. The surging waters have destroyed 41,000 houses and damaged 368,000 more, according to the Ministry of Emergency Management. Death tolls and battered homes are fewer than in previous years, but displacement and economic loss are far higher. China's dams, its primary guard against floods, are coming into question as they face increasing strain. Last week, the government blasted open a dam in Anhu. On the same day, more than 16,000 people were trapped in Guzhen Town in the same province as the water surged to 10 feet high and broke through levees. Fears are intensifying over the gargantuan Three Gorges Dam, where the reservoir has risen 50 feet above the warning level to its highest point since the dam was completed in 2006. China has more than 98,000 dams according to the Ministry of Water Resources, more than any other nation. Many were built in the 1950s and 60s and suffer from poor maintenance. These flood control engineering projects are not a panacea, said Mr. Chun, director of Beijing-based Institute of Public and Environmental Affairs. With torrential rains, he added, the amount of water concentrated in each reservoir poses a risk of serious damage, even in smaller dams. The heavy storms over the Yangtze River Basin are the result of a Western Pacific subtropical high, a pressure system that every summer carries warm air from the south to the north. The system is abnormally strong this year, said Lu Zhenyun, climate and energy campaigner for Greenpeace East Asia, but it's unclear whether it's caused by climate change. The flooding, however, is directly linked to man-made problems. 
China's over-reliance on dams, excessive construction in low-lying areas, land reclamation in wetlands and lakes, and cities built with poor drainage systems have all exacerbated flood damage. Those chased from their homes also speak of mismanaged flood systems, lack of government accountability, and unequal treatment of the rural poor, who bear the most of the flood burden. In Shaxian, a county that suffered its worst flooding in decades this month when an upstream dam overflowed in the middle of the night, residents said they had been given no warning. None of this can be reused. It's all trash, said Ma De Kong, a waste collector who was removing wooden crates, damaged machinery, and soggy mountains of box tea at Wei Wei Che, one of the many tea factories whose entire stock had been soaked and spoiled in a matter of minutes. Ma calculated more than $143,000 in damage to his machines and pickup trucks. But his was just a small business, he said. The factories which were paying him a few thousand dollars each to clean up had lost much more. Their workers swept out brownish yellow water from the floors. The smell of rot lingered in the air. The water came so fast we could never have imagined it, said Xiao, 49, the co-owner of a home appliance shop in Shexian. His relatives and store employees sat on its front steps, rinsing kitchen and bathroom appliance parts that they hoped to still sell. As a small family firm, the shop had struggled to survive the first half of the year. When pandemic lockdowns cut into business, its warehouses were full, and business only restarted about a month ago. They had been sleeping when the waters rolled in around 5 a.m. that day, rushing over riverbanks to swallow sidewalks and streets. By 5.30 a.m., the water was at people's shins. By 6 a.m., it was approaching their waist. By 7.30 a.m., it was six and a half feet high, and factory workers, shop owners, and high schoolers who'd woken early for their college entrance exams were climbing onto second floors and rooftops to escape. If the government just gave us half a day's warning, I could have saved $14,000 to $28,000 in damage, Chow said. He lost at least $43,000, he said, and had received no government relief, a maddening if typical setback in this region. Much of the worst damage in this year's flood, said Ma, has come from broken dams or dikes, or from international release of reservoir waters without sufficient warning or protection of people downstream. Yet dams have been a point of pride for the Communist Party. The Three Gorges Dam in particular has been touted by the Chinese government as a symbol of national prestige. Despite controversies over the mass displacement, environmental destruction, pollution, landslides, and earthquake risks it has caused. And this is one of the more interesting parts of this article. Moving on. The choice of where to let waters out and whom to flood highlights inequalities. China tends to prioritize protection of cities. More populous and economical important regions, Ma said, at the cost of villagers, mostly farmers or migrant workers. Those who get flooded should not be living so close to the rivers, but many of them don't have a choice, he added. China's Hoku system ties every citizen's access to health care, education, and other social services to their place of origin. Villagers who move to cities for work cannot truly settle in urban areas and tend to send money back to their hometown. Flooding villages and small towns cost less overall than flooding a city, but it means that those with less cushion for survival are hit the hardest. Some environmentalists and engineers say China should revamp its entire flood control approach. All our urban planning and design has this single-minded concept to speed up the water and flush it out. But we need to do the opposite, said Yu Kongjian, Peking University professor and founder of a landscape architecture firm called Turnescape. Yu studied design at Harvard and returned to China a year before catastrophic flooding along the Yangtze River killed more than 4,000 people in 1998. He spent the next 20 years urging Chinese officials to adopt an ecocentric approach to urbanization. China's cities should be like sponges, not toilets, he said. Water should be slowed down and retained, not flushed away. The way you do that, you said, is by restoring riverbanks, wetlands, and lakes, complete with their living sponges of soil and vegetation that can absorb and keep water locally. I am not against dams and hydrological structures, but I am opposed to over-reliance on human flood control. These gray infrastructures that destroy the green and natural system, you said. Just like a person, if you stay alive only by relying on a ventilator and injections, you are fragile. What will happen when the machines break? The human will face the risk of death. Cities are the same. Man cannot win against nature, you said. Everything man-made is destined to break one day. The ruins of Rome tell us that. And we can only hope that China takes his advice. Thank you for watching this video. If you are finding it informative, please consider giving the channel a subscribe. Now on to our last article, courtesy of Global Times. Heavy machineries work to build temporary embankment to prevent possible flood water in East China.
And this article doesn't contain much text. It's a series of photos showing dozens of construction vehicles building a temporary embankment. Aerial photos taken on July 28, 2020 shows heavy machinery working to build a temporary embankment at Deja Lake. And I think this is a good place to wrap up today's video. I hope that you found it informative and check back soon for more content. <laughs>